So welcome guys to the next episode of the horror game series. So since last time I've just placed down some lights and just made a complete level. Um, <clears throat> and if, if, the, if the maze is uh, dark in your editor, uh, you can just hit display.unshaded um, and that will make it visible because this is the default or the normal perspective and it's you can almost uh, not see the maze so just hit display unshaded that solved that problem so in this episode I thought we should uh, create the orbs that the player will collect because now we just have a maze and some simple lights in the maze and yeah we do have a monster that is chasing us as well yeah here it is so I thought we should place down some orbs that the player has to collect to be able to win the game. So let's do that. Start off by creating a new scene. Hit add the node and search for area. And rename this to orb. Pro provide this with a collision shape. And with a mesh instance as well. And this should be a sphere mesh. And the collision shape should also be a sphere shape. And under the mesh, under material, just give it a new spatial material. And change the albedo color to the color you want it to be. So let's give it a red one or a blue one. Uh, copy this hex value. And under emission, enable it and just paste it in here as well. So that will make this orb glow. Uh, we need to give it, we need to place this orb in a group as well, so under node, under groups, just oh, whoops, add it to the orb group and save it under source. So under level, under grid map, just create a spatial and this will act as a orb container and just instantiate an orb. Place the orb at the player's position, so it's under the level at the moment. That's cool. And just run the game. And there it is perfect. So it's a bit too big. Let's just minimize it so we can uh, go under the mesh and just. Radius of 0 0.5 and height 1 and the collision shape can we need to do the same for the collision shape so under sphere Shape on the radius 0 0.5 Okay Yeah, that's better uh, Let's animate this Just to give it some cool idle animation. So provide it with an animation player and a new animation and let's just keyframe the mesh instance translation and as well with the collision shape and insert a new key and increase the Y position on both of these properties and if we hit autoplay on run and loop we should get something like like this. So it's not the best animation, but it's something. It's cubic, yeah? Yeah, it is. So it's not the best one, but yeah. Let's keep it for, uh, this way. Okay, so. You know what, we should actually slow it down a little bit. I thought it was too fast, so let's just slow it down something like 0 0.6. Is that better? Yeah, it is. Cool, save it. And let's just see how this looks in the game. Yeah, it's good enough for me. So let's place down two orbs in the game for now. So now we need a player to be able to collide with these orbs. And how do we go about doing that? Um, okay, so we need to provide an area to the player and this we can call collider 
and give it a collision shape as well. And let's give it a cylinder shape. Raise it up a little bit. And yeah, we need to scale this down. Let's just give it a radius of 0 0.7. Cool, and save it. So let's get a reference to that. So on ready var collider equals collider. And now we need to connect the signal to be able to uh, notify the player when it's collided with some object. So collider dot connect area entered. We want to we want to notify when areas get entered within our colliders area so on area entered and then we need to create this function let's do it on the bottom here so func area and now we have to check if area is in group of orb so uh, this will of course collide with everything that has the right collision masks on it. So uh, we need to we need to first to give, check if if the area is in a uh, is in the group of orbs, and if it is, yeah, we need to do something. So first we can we can queue free the area, and then we can actually create a signal orb collected. And let's just emit that one. Orb collected. So let's just try it out. Just hit an orb and run it. Oof. Okay, that works. Perfect. So let's remove the print function and in the level. Let's get a reference to to the container. I'm ready for our orb container. So we need to create two functions, or rather two variables. So what's going on here? Orb container isn't clear in the current scope. What's going on? Ah. So we, need to keep, uh, so we need to keep track of how many orbs the player has collected and how many orbs is within the level. So let's do that. Var uh, collected orbs equals zero. Var uh, total orb count zero for now. So let's set total orb count to the amount of orb containers child. So get child count. And then we need to connect the signal that we created in the player. So under the player we created a signal called orb collector. So let's connect that. So player.connect orb collector and on orb collected. Let's create that function. And if the player collects an orb, we just increase the collected orbs variable. So collected orbs plus equals one, and we need to we need to check if collected orbs is greater than or equal to total orb count. And if it is, we just win the game. So print you just won. And let's try this one and see if it works. So we collected the first one, and this is the last one. You just won. Perfect. So that works. That's awesome. That is awesome. So let's place down some orbs in the maze. And another one over here maybe. I don't even know. Let's try to get those. So that's the first one. Got it. The second one. Got it. Maybe the orb should emit lights as well. I think that would be cool. Yeah, it should definitely should emit light. There's a the monster. Get away from me.
Ah, whatever. You know what? Let's let's make the orb emit light. So let's create an omni light. And the light should be the same color as the mesh instance emission. So let's copy this hex value again and under omni light, just place it in here and save it. See how that looks. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Much better. That looks cool. Okay. So, is that it for this episode? I think it is. Do we need to do something else? In the next episode, I thought we should tie this everything up. We should uh, make a we should make a menu for when you die of the monster, and we should make a menu for when you win the game. And also just a simple menu, a main menu, and, and stuff like that as well. Uh, and then we'll further build on this. All right, so that is it for this quick little episode. Um, if you like it, just drop a like and uh, subscribe and all that fun stuff. And I uh, will catch you in the next one. So, peace out.